subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Phosphine on Venus. Is it there or is it not? That is now a mystery. We discussed earlier in another video about the significance of the findings of phosphine on the cloud tops of Venus, but that discovery has since been called into question. It now turns out that after reanalysis of the data, astronomers have concluded that the phosphine signal in the readings is actually much fainter than they had originally announced. In this video, we'll talk about what exactly happened after the first phosphine announcement in September, why the findings were called into question, what others discovered, and what the subsequent reanalysis of the same data revealed. My name is Sandhya Ramesh, and this is Pure Science. If we remember, two months ago in September, a bunch of astronomers made big news when they reported finding signatures for phosphine on Venus. Phosphine is a biosignature, which is a potential marker of life, and we have theorized that there could be hospitable conditions for life in the upper atmosphere of Venus. The findings were very exciting and for more details, there's another Pure Science video on it. It will be linked in the description below. But soon after the announcement for this phosphine discovery was made, researchers started calling into question the data that this announcement came from. The original readings detected phosphine about 55 kilometers above the surface of Venus. These readings were made in radio and they were made using the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array or the ALMA telescope in Chile and the James Clerk Maxwell telescope in Hawaii. These are radio telescopes. But the astronomers identified only one absorption line for phosphine in their data. Someone else needed to confirm it, especially through infrared and other parts of the spectrum. So, of course, others started to work on this project. It was extremely interesting after all. But since then, at least four independent studies have failed to confirm phosphine on Venus. The first team went through archival observations of Venus going back into past existing data sets to now hunt for a phosphine signal in them and they couldn't find it. Then two other groups independently reprocessed the same phosphine discovery data and they couldn't find the signal in the mathematics that was involved there either. And this study stated that the amounts of phosphine that they detected on Venus were at least four times lower than what the original paper indicated. When this infrared paper came out, it caused a bit of unrest within the astronomy community because of unprofessional language that was used in the paper. The authors conclude that the detection was incorrect and invited the original team to revise their work or retract their paper. Now, this is very cocky behavior. In science, there's always contradiction and all such findings are a part of larger data that collects over time and further solidifies existing theories. Just look at the sheer number of papers that are coming out now on various drugs and treatments being used for COVID and they're so contradictory, but that is to be expected. Depending on varying initial conditions or assumptions, results from even the same experiment can be contradictory. But no one goes around pointing in their paper that someone else's paper is incorrect and they should retract it. That's just very rude. It was met with immediate backlash as expected from the scientific community and the journal and the authors ended up apologizing and removing that sentence from their paper. But now, the original authors of the phosphine discovery paper have also reanalyzed their own data. And they state that there seems to have been a processing error in the original data set. They say that there's still a phosphine signal, but it's much fainter than what they thought it was earlier. How much fainter? New updates say about one part per billion, so about one seventh of the earlier estimate. Now, the scientists describe the presence of phosphine instead of with confidence as tentative. The main critique of their work seems to be all mathematical. That is how difficult it is to extract the signature of phosphine from a data set that is so complicated to process. And what was this processing error? 
Well, it turned out that the original data from ALMA telescope, according to Jane Greaves, who is the lead author of the phosphine paper, the original data contained a wonky signal that affected the results. ALMA apparently released the more refined, accurate version of this data set on 16th November, which is just now. And then Greaves and her team, they redid their analysis on the data and then they found out that their phosphine signal was much weaker than what earlier calculations had indicated. But they insist that it's still definitely phosphine. In a bit of support to this, another study combed through NASA's data from the 70s Pioneer Venus mission, which had dropped a probe onto Venus. This probe fell through the clouds of Venus and it measured the atmosphere as it fell. It also did detect a phosphorus compound in the clouds, which could likely be from phosphine. Nothing is clear yet. We still don't know where the phosphine is coming from, even at this lowered levels. And this has definitely reignited interest in Venus. So over the next decade or so, it will definitely be an exciting time for missions to Venus. And meanwhile, in the scientific community, we'll also continue to hear of tiffs over contradictory findings, which are nothing to get frustrated about. Scientists questioning other scientists and revising their work in light of newer evidence is indeed the textbook process of how science works. Phosphine, which goes by the chemical formula PH3, is synthesized on Earth by anaerobic life forms and decaying organic matter, as well as in the lab by humans. So the researchers set about trying to find the source of this gas on Venus and could come up with nothing that we know or understand that occurs naturally. So they offer as explanation only the two options that are left. Some chemical process that we do not know or understand yet or life. In this episode, we're going to discuss the new findings from Venus. What phosphine is, how it was detected, what could possibly create it, why we think there could be life in the clouds of Venus and what all of this means. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Phosphine gas is a biosignature on Venus. Biosignatures are markers that indicate potential present or past life. A common one is water, of course, whenever we send out spacecraft or we're looking at exoplanets or even other bodies in our own solar system, we chase after water because water is a biosignature. 